Do you know what a neurosurgeon does? Today, neurosurgeons are commonly called brain surgeons, and many assume that that's the extent of what these physicians do. However, neurosurgeons treat and diagnose ailments associated with the entire nervous system, which goes beyond the brain and affects the entire body. Here to talk about what a neurosurgeon really does is Baptist Medical Group board certified and fellowship trained neurosurgeon Colby Mayer, MD. Thanks for being here, Dr. Colby. Thanks for having me. Well, before we get into this, tell us a little bit about yourself and what led you to become a neurosurgeon. Well, I think uh, I grew up in Mobile, Alabama, so very close to here, but um, I think the first step is just deciding to become a physician. And um, I had an injury in high school that forced me basically to work for one of the orthopedic surgeons Mobile rather than um, work a job in construction and then that ultimately led me to medical school and then once in medical school it's just the love of the of the nervous system how clean and how easy it is to make a diagnosis and really to focus on uh, that part of the body um, that led me to to consider neurosurgery well great and we're glad that also led you to Pensacola well thanks well as I mentioned in the in the intro you know many people think that's a, a brain surgeon and that may be all that you do but there's also all these other things that that you're involved with and tell us a little bit about the different ailments and the different conditions that you treat well I think you hit the nail on the head I, I think most people think of us as brain surgeons and certainly that's what we do but when you really look it's about 15 to 20 percent of what we do and and the other um, 80 to 85 percent often has to do with the spine or peripheral nerves and in a nutshell you know we essentially take care of disease processes of the of the brain the spine peripheral nerves and their coverings so the skull uh, and the spine being really the, the the biggest part of that the majority of it so um, how does one prepare for this broad spectrum of care well, it's, it's a pretty long residency program. So, um, you know, we spend four years in medical school, a year of surgical internship, and then usually somewhere between five and seven years of training. And uh, it's during that training that you're exposed to a broad range of surgical pathologies, you know, having to do with the brain, the spine, and the peripheral nerves. And, and um, you know, from there, you kind of get out into practice and, and and you can specialize, so there are a lot of neurosurgeons that are specialized in spine or peripheral nerve or cranial issues, so brain issues. When you say specify in those particular areas, what are, um, what are the conditions called or what, what may some terminology that people might understand or have heard before that would correlate to, to the treatment areas that you're talking about? So I would say probably the most common are, are ailments of the spine and, and those can be traumatic, so fractures fractures of the cervical spine, thoracic spine, lumbar spine. I think more common is probably arthritic change. Um, so, you know, changes in the spine that result in compression on individual nerves or groups of nerves. Tumors, so we, we uh, tackle all types of tumors of the spine. Um, you know, in, in terms of um, the brain, it's, it's pretty broad ranging as well. Obviously, traumatic injuries to the brain. Uh, brain tumors of all sorts, so metastatic tumors that come from other parts of the body and go to the brain, primary tumors that start in the brain itself, um, vascular problems, so aneurysms of the brain, vascular malformations, mm. um, and then really benign tumors that kind of cover the coverings of the brain, so meningiomas and, and things like that. So do, do your patients typically come to you through their primary care physician? Most commonly, so I would say there's a group that comes through the emergency department, so traumatic issues or patients that have had uh, events that bring their pathology sure. to light, we'll see through the emergency department, but probably the most common is that they go to their primary care physician with a problem, and that workup leads to, to um, an evaluation by one of us to see if there's a surgical solution or a way to help them surgically. Okay, and we know that you do do surgery. Uh, that is, like you said, a certain percentage of what you do. But let's talk about some of the other uh, technology and the advances that have allowed you to uh, treat some of these conditions in other ways besides surgery. Well, I think technology has been a has been a huge part of um, of neurosurgery and neurology, just the neurosciences. You know, one of the great things about the nervous system, and I think one of the things that excites all of us the most is that we probably understand less than 15% of what goes on in our brain. So there's a great deal of research and, and exploration, really, in neuroscience that's left out there. Um, I think the technological advances in the last 10 years that have helped us the most are, are really imaging. So the fact that we're able to get better and better pictures of all parts of the nervous system 
allows us to make more precise diagnosis, and that gives us the ability to help in making decisions probably that are a little bit more accurate and have uh, you know, better predicted outcomes. Mm -hmm. Well, as you mentioned, some of these people may come to you via the emergency room and, and that's, that's where they need to be. Um, but those that do come through doctors or have more of the, the chronic conditions, the arthritis and things, um, what kind of feedback do you get from them or what kind of reaction maybe um, do they have to being referred to a neurosurgeon? Well, I think everybody's anxious when they get referred to anybody that has surgeon behind their name. Um, you know, I think the implication that what they have may have a surgical solution is always anxiety provoking. I think one thing that we can allay their fears, our, our goals really are to help them from least risky strategy, you know, to the most, which is often surgery. And so it's not the only tool in our armamentarium. So we're gonna sit down and go through the pathology. I think really explaining the unknown helps people the most. And then go through you know, what resources there are to help them. And, mm -hmm. and surgery is obviously one of those resources or they wouldn't be seeing us. But it's usually not the only resource, especially in arthritic changes in the spine. Well, speaking of arthritis and things, we've had some other doctors on uh, from the Andrews Institute, and I believe you're going to be out there a certain, certain number of days. Tell us a little bit about how your practice is set up here in Pensacola. Well, uh, we'll have office hours two days a week at the Towers at Baptist Medical Center, and then uh, we'll be starting tomorrow, actually, with office hours on Fridays at Andrews, uh, you know, at the Andrews Institute so that we can help the folks on the Gulf Free side a little bit more. Great, great. Well, we appreciate it, and that's great information, and welcome, and um, look forward to being around you more. Sounds good, Jeff. All right, Thanks take care. very much.